In 2013, a horror movie came out called The Conjuring. It frightened people around the world with the true story of the Perrin family, who were plagued by a dark, sinister entity and were terrorized in their farmhouse in Rhode Island. Well, we're here because the new owners believe that this dark force has been reawakened based on the case files of famed paranormal investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren. We're about to reopen their most notorious case. This home in Harrisville, Rhode Island is nearly 300 years old. It has seen its share of tragedy, bearing witness to the birth of a nation in the war that almost tore it apart. These walls have stood the test of time, but so too has the dark entity that roams this ancient land. Before the Perrin family lived through their terrifying experience, the Arnold family resided here for generations. During that time, they were cursed with many tragedies, including the death of Sally Arnold, who in 1848 succumbed to typhus, along with two of her children, Susan Arnold, who hanged herself with a small cord from a wardrobe hook. 11-year-old Prudence Arnold, who declined 22-year-old William Knowlton's invitation to marry, and for this, she was nearly decapitated. John Arnold, who committed suicide by ingesting insecticide. And neighbor Jarvis Smith, who went on an alcoholic binge, was found dead from exposure in the Arnold barn. Why all this suffering? Is there an ancient force in these woods? Something driving all the death in this area? There it is, guys. Oh, wow. That's the house that inspired the movie The Conjuring. The new owners have apparently seen the same exact black mass that was seen back in 1973 that started all this. Hey. Hey. How you doing? How you doing, sir? Nice to meet you. Jennifer and Corey Heisman made headlines when they purchased this infamous home in the spring of 2019. It wasn't long before they reported witnessing the same black mass the Perrin family documented 40 years earlier. These events have already traumatized members of this brave family. What manifestations have happened in there that you have seen? Uh, we've been seeing a lot of lights, just like uh, flashes of lights, okay. where there shouldn't be any lights. We have seen the black mist. Seen it. Yes. And that bothered him enough where he had to leave. He hadn't come back My for about two weeks. And he didn't come back for how long? About two weeks. We were sleeping. We did not hear about it till the next day. I imagine he laid awake most of the night, but he didn't talk about it at first. And we were supposed to spend two nights here before him and I headed back to Maine, and he was insisting on going that day. Okay. What could this black mass be that terrorized Corey's son to the point that he refused to return to this house for two weeks? Knowing the history of it and what's happened here, are you at all concerned for your friend, his family? I am a little concerned. Uh, I, I don't really understand the potential of what's here. I've been uh, here at the house pretty much since Corey bought it, and during that time, I've seen a lot of strange things. One of the most things, uh, one of the most um, impactful things that I experienced was a black mist. And the best way I can describe it is this black mist that comes together and then literally moves with purpose. When you saw these black mists, did you ever feel threatened? Um, I absolutely was terrified, I mean, just to be really honest with you. Uh, I'm a skeptic, and coming here, I was a skeptic. Uh, and I tell you, since I've been here, it has really caused me to take a, a second look at my core beliefs. I'm experiencing things in this home that I, I just can't explain. Are you concerned for things that could happen? You know, just to be really honest with you, I have welcomed that. Uh, that's why I'm here. That's why I've spent so much time in this house. I want to experience everything that this house has to offer. You just admitted to me that you are a skeptic. Absolutely. Okay. That you are welcoming this. But some of us also know how serious it can get. If you're opening your arms to something you even said that you don't understand and you don't know its potential. I mean, this is really playing with fire because you're here day in and day out. Absolutely. Extended periods of time. Just please be careful. Thank you. I mean, what you're telling me right now, like, really has me shook. 
like. To see this full-blown skeptic so changed on his beliefs is gratifying. However, I feel as though whatever has shown itself to him knows that he has opened himself up fully to it, which is very dangerous. We've tracked down the lieutenant who has jurisdiction over this area in order to find out more about this home's sordid history. Lieutenant Carlo, The Conjuring movie comes out. Did that just cause an uproar here? With, the, with the house and everything? It did. A lot of people knew of the house in, in town and knew of you know, some of the things that's happened here. After the movie, it became nonstop traffic up and down the road, people stopping, people trying to walk on the property. The officer now tells us that the owner just be illnesses. I've been uh, to different various calls. We would come here middle of the night. There was an elderly gentleman that lived here. So been I, here? Yeah, I've been. How long ago? Uh, I think the last time I was here was maybe seven or eight years ago. When I've been in. I just know it was, it was constant for a guy that didn't seem to be all that ill. From the 1800s to the present day, it is becoming clear every family who has lived here seems to be facing the dark entity that resides in this ancient forest. Is he here? Okay, hey, come here real quick. Okay, so here's here's what's going on right now. We were just told that Corey's son, uh, he didn't want to talk to us at first, but now they are talking him to uh, coming and letting us know exactly what happened. Corey and Jen's son is about to let us know how severe this situation hey, really is. Exactly. Hey, come on over here. Let's talk. Um, cool. I know you didn't really want to talk at first, but I'm, I'm glad that you're doing it now. It's exactly. helpful for us. When I was talking to your father, he said that you saw something that freaked you out to yes. make you leave here for a long time. Yes, I saw a black shadow. Okay. Now, where did you see this? I saw it um, when I was laying down, about midnight or so. Were you going to bed? Yes, I was going to bed. We all were. Um, I just woke up because I heard something, and I look up, and all of a sudden, clear as day, just a black shadow. It was moving, like, in the corners. Why did this scare you so much to make you leave here? I didn't know what it was going to do to us, to be honest. And the way I just saw it, I didn't know how to react to it. I just, I was freaked out to death. And I just, you know, just want to go home. So it affected you that much? Yeah, yeah. it kind of traumatized me. Tyler so critically frightened causes me great concern, as these dark entities will use fear to dig into the wound deeper and deeper. I think like with this, this is a huge case, that's why I need you, Billy, Jay, I need you all um, absorbing every single thing that you hear right now, and we haven't been inside this house yet, and we're getting ready to do that right now with a member of the original family that went through this, the worst of the worst, we are gonna go meet Andrea Perrin, who is going to help us with this investigation. Andrea Perrin, how are you? Uh, lovely, how are you? Good. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. We are going to walk inside of the house that uh, inspired the movie The Conjuring, um, that documented the events which took place with your family inside this house and for this historic moment for us. I really appreciate what you do, what you, you know, you have brought the paranormal to life for millions of people who maybe were skeptics themselves until they saw what you do. And it's so important, the work is so important. And I'm truly honored that you would want me to give you a tour of this house. But I do need to give you a cautionary tale. Um, my mother almost died in this house because of something that Lorraine Warren's medium unleashed. Uh, and I saw that happen. Did Ed and Lorraine Warren, did they help or did they make it worse? <sighs> I think that they had the very best of intentions. Lorraine told me 40 years later, Ed and I were in over our heads as soon as we crossed the threshold. We just didn't know it. Well, that's a hell of a build-up. <laughs> and uh, my years of doing this with, with my, my boys here, um, it's, it's brought me here. This is a pinnacle moment. Oh, let's do this. After you. Okay. It was like the hand of God made a fist. I blacked out.
give me just one moment here. Okay. We are about to step inside one of the most iconic haunted homes in America. My heart is racing. Andrea, can you take us to the area where the seance happened? I will. Ed and Lorraine Warren's investigation culminated in a seance so brutal it would force the parents to banish the Warrens from this home forever. When the Warrens showed up, it was the eve of Halloween in 1973, and Lorraine walked over to the black stove that we had in the kitchen. She covered her eyes and lowered her head and said, I sense a malignant presence in this house. Her name is Bathsheba. Bathsheba Sherman never lived in this house. She was not of the Arnold clan. She lived about a mile away from here, but she had some association with this house. Did Lorraine Warren have previous knowledge of Bathsheba no, before she came to this house? she didn't. And so did she just, she just came up with that very unique name collected. out of the space? Right out of the ether. So there has to be some there is form some of form. interest there. Absolutely. For her to pull that name out of thin air. Yeah. She was born in 1812 and died in 1885. So, so do you acknowledge that with the hauntings here or no? I would certainly say so. Was she practicing witchcraft? No, I don't. There's no record anywhere that she was a practicing witch. There's no record anywhere that she Did Lorraine Warren child. say that she was a witch? Yes, and she also said that she murdered an infant in this house. Legend has it. In the 1800s, a woman accused of being a witch took the life of an innocent soul in this very house. Some say she plunged a knitting needle deep into the neck of a helpless infant. Was this horrific story based in truth? Or was it simply a vision from the mind of Lorraine Warren? Whoa, 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 whoa. Yes, I whoa. know. Hold on. moment, I notice a shift in Andrea's demeanor. Is she being affected by the presence of the dark entity that is said to reside here? Okay, I'm getting a cold breeze on the back of my neck. Expect malfunctions. Can I see that meter, please? Yeah. Something is in front of me. I'm <sighs> As I go closer to the wall to see if it's anything in the walls, it actually goes down to a one. Can you see this? Yeah. As I go out here where this mass that I feel still ice cold on my hand, it's actually floating. Oh my oh. god! That just spiked to a 20. Look at this! Oh my god. I have never... Look at this. The energy in this staircase is intense, so I head upstairs. This floor served as the bed for the parent girls. They reported significant activity in these rooms. You could hear a set of footsteps walk up to that bedroom, and you didn't know if it was Dad opening the door to say, come on, girls, it's time for dinner, or if it was something else entirely. It took about a year and a half for me to believe that things were happening because the kids would tell me, and, I, and then finally I did believe it, and uh, especially when she started coming to me. My sister, the first lived here came crawling into my bed and she said i hear voices i said what mama is that you they're still here this house was built 40 years before the signing of the declaration of independence the door rebellion happened the revolutionary war the civil war and countless other skirmishes i have every reason to believe that there are seven dead soldiers buried in the wall and it's probably in the wall right out behind this house could one of any stone walls on this property be the final resting place of the seven dead soldiers? There are seven dead soldiers in the wall. 
through there, which is now a library, used to be my parents' bedroom. That's where Lorraine Warren said that the baby was killed. In this room. Here, in this room. And the major manifestations that happened in the house with my mother happened in this room. I'm in here, and I feel very, very dizzy and very, very... Balance. And I have anxiety, and to be honest with you, while I'm in here with you, I don't like being in here with you. But I don't feel at any time in this house that I have ever felt any kind of anger at all until I have come inside of this house, in this room right here. Yeah. Heaviness here, harder to breathe, and I swear I just heard women talking when you walk over here and I'm getting really I'm getting just this again I'm getting this again with you in here like you're very very nice lady and I've had no problems I've felt a cold air over there but in this room I have some really <laughs> anger in here excuse me it's I'm okay. sorry my mother was terrified in this house and the reason that we sold it in 1980 was because she said to my father Roger I will not survive another winter in house ed and lorraine warren had called ahead and they asked if they could come by well when they showed up all hell broke loose in this house my father got furious because they came with an entourage the warrens came over and they did the uh, the seance in the house it was that was not a good thing and i was against it but they did it anyway lorraine felt that my mother was oppressed one step away from possession ed had told all of us the kids to go upstairs well we were kids what the hell we came downstairs as fast as we could we all wanted to know what was going on in the house and i'm standing right here with my sister cindy and we're watching what's happening in here and three to five minutes into the seance and my wife got all her whole body went started to lift up off the floor my mother was sitting in one of the captain's chairs and she just her head just went back and then it came forward and then the captain's chair that she was sitting in began to lift off the floor and all of a sudden it was like the hand of god made a fist and came around and landed in the middle of this table and the table came down on the floor her chair with her in it was tossed from here to the middle of that room in front of that fireplace she she was completely out of this world at that point it came over to me and started pulling on me and trying to drag me away from her and i just got up and they called him a pretty bad name and i just turned whacked him and I think he ended up losing that tooth that was about the worst thing that happened to me in that house over the course of the next 20 minutes something dark takes us down one by one the anger that began to overwhelm me in the library has now become unbearable Andrea he's not okay just so you know I know him very well long time he's not okay the look that he gave me in my eyes he's not okay i am feeling something very very strong and i know all too well what is going on um but at times it feels as though my mind is getting away from me yeah. and it's some, some you're going in between dimensions yeah we didn't know if it was 1976 1876 1776 or 1676 there is no time here there is no time here, there is no time here at all what's wrong dude What's wrong? Like blacked out. How long have I been sitting here? You all right, dude? I started seeing things moving on both sides of me. They came around behind me, and I just shut my eyes and put my head down. Like, I didn't even want to look. Like, I just knew there was some dark figure behind me. Like, I know, Jay, I'm doing it too. Why are we shaking? I don't know. I'm doing the same thing. It was something dark, rolling down. That was a demonic spirit that had never walked the earth in human form. Last 
night while interviewing Andrea Perrin. Something powerful took a hold of each of us, one by one. What's wrong? I blacked out. Extreme caution. As we return to the house to prepare for tonight's investigation, Corey shows us startling footage captured on a phone just before we arrived. You can clearly see the light in Andrea Perrin's childhood room flashing intensely. Could this just be faulty wiring in an old house? Or is it indeed a sign from the same entity that affected us last night? Has Andrea's presence here aggravated something? This is day two of our investigation, and um, I, I have an announcement to make to the three of you. In 1973, you hear about Ed and Lorraine Warren being here for this investigation. Well, a lot of people don't know that before Ed and Lorraine Warren got here to the Parent Family Crisis, there was another team of paranormal investigators that responded to this immediately. And that was led by two people, Keith and Carl Johnson. Demonologists, paranormal investigators. Apparently they investigated here for a couple months before Ed and Lorraine Warren even showed up. And something happened when Ed and Lorraine showed up that caused them to leave this investigation. They never got to finish the investigation that they started here in this house that affected them both. They are pioneers in the paranormal field. Now, after tonight, we will be doing our full extended lockdown lights out investigation. But before that, we are going to do a surveillance style investigation. Kind of like a bait and trap investigation where we are going to observe, we're going to use vintage equipment with the first investigators that responded to the Perrin family paranormal crisis inside that farmhouse. Carl Johnson. Hello there. It's a pleasure to meet you. Good to meet you, Zach. So, you were here. You were here in 1973. You oh, and your yes. brother responded to this case. What was that like? Didn't know what to expect when we first pulled up the driveway. Of course, we heard there was a haunted farmhouse here, and uh, it was that. It certainly delivered. I was a member of an organization based at Rhode Island College called PYRO, Parapsychological Investigation and Research Organization. Since there was no internet to get the word out about us, I put a little ad in a paper, a local newspaper, and three weeks later, it was responded to by Carolyn Parent. So we were invited to come here to the farmhouse. So we arrived on the scene. Right away, I felt somewhat apprehensive. We were pulling up in the driveway, and I just, something's off. So I could feel something. Something did not want me here. It was really forceful. It was like magnetic. It was like electric. The Parent family welcomed us in very very nice all-American family, and yet something was foreboding about the whole atmosphere here. We were conducting this interview process. We started off by uh, asking the family what they've been experiencing, how long it's been going on. And while we were speaking to the family, I heard movement rustling around like footsteps shuffling upstairs in the next level. I asked if anybody was upstairs, and the girls told me, no, we, we hear that almost every day. We hear people moving around up there. They took me up eventually inside to the bedroom and said this is where we feel the most afraid so I was looking around the bedrooms area and after I'd been there just a few minutes I saw something out of my peripheral vision on the right side coming down at me past the bedrooms something black and shapeless I can't even call it a form it was something dark rolling down it enveloped me I reflexively closed my eyes and I opened my eyes it was gone now, there was a window right next to me that could not be closed because of the August humidity. I asked them, do you have any religious experience, any religious beliefs? And they said, oh, yes, we're Catholic. We're of the Catholic faith. So I suggested calling upon the name of Jesus. As soon as I said the name Jesus, that window came slamming down with such force that the whole room practically shook. And you witnessed this I witnessed with others. It, and they all screamed and gasped. I always believed that was a demonic spirit that had never the earth in human form. We have a big storm moving in tonight. Oh yes, it's predicted. And with that said, 
Will you reopen your case with our current case and join forces with us tonight in investigating this farmhouse? I will be enthusiastic to do so. As we prepare for our investigation, we are interrupted by something shocking. At this very moment, we see an unexplained and very prominent black mass move inside this screened in porch. Are you rolling? Okay. We were just doing a drone shot of us walking to the house. Right. As we were walking up, I was staring into the screen I just heard something. enclosure. Okay, hold on. And did you see what I saw? I did. I just Carl, what did you see? I saw something dark just moving out there. So, yeah. Okay, hold on, hold on. The rain's coming in. Get in here. Get in here. Just because it's a little old and dusty in there, I gotta wear this. Come here, come here, come here. Three of everybody. Right. What did you see? It looked like it was on the porch. Right here, exactly. I take that as an intimidation tactic. That's something I have not witnessed for 46 years. Show yourself for us. Kill this car. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. This thing is going crazy. Johnson and I just witnessed a black mass moving in the house. house. Did you see what I saw? I did. I saw something dark just moving out there. We quickly set up a surveillance nerve center complete with some vintage equipment then immediately go in pursuit of this black mass. Can we do something real quick? I can't get that out of my brain and I kind of want to like be in pursuit of that right now. I don't know we're not supposed to start yet but can we like go in here? Yeah. And like literally just do a quick first wave of investigating. Is that okay? Yes. Can we come with you? Yes. Carl begins using an older style tape recorder as we head inside the farmhouse to investigate. Entrance to the basement. We're ready. We're receptive. This is your chance. If you are still here. For us, it's a lot of years ago. 46 years ago. For you, time is not the same. Zach, it exists at all. Come here. So please speak to us. I just went to 20. We entreat you to say something. Aaron tells me that the tri-field meter begins picking up strong, unexplained spikes of electromagnetic energy after baselining at a zero ever since we walked into the house. My name is Carl. You might remember me from all those years ago. I hope you do. Please come forward now. I'll have some questions for you. So these it's thunder. thunder ready. That's I heard that. Thunder. Oh, yeah, that's it's the thunder. Or is someone upstairs? Sound like someone upstairs. I don't know. I just assumed it was moody thunder. It was vibrating. It might have been Keith, when we first came here, that's what I heard upstairs. That's what that's we what heard. you heard. Disembodied footsteps. We are all unsure whether this is the sound of thunder or something above us rumbling across the floor. So Carl, Jay, and myself immediately head upstairs to investigate. So we get upstairs now. Considering we might have heard something. Yeah. I couldn't tell if that was thunder or rumbling up here, but I did feel it vibrate. Can you go to the next room? Show yourself for us. Do you welcome us here? As we welcome you? Alright, here we are. Waiting to hear from you. If you want to speak to us, if any message, anything you'd like to say to us at this time, this is your chance to show yourself. Something's up. What's happening? I just turned the fan off and I thought, come on, I heard something. Something tick. On glass or something really that? And I just got a cold chills up. I tell you, I'm not prone to mood swings, but I feel something in here. Do you? Yeah, yeah. I do. You walked into something here. This, this is the first time that I'm feeling. Whoa! Holy cow! Yeah. It's just a cold breeze just came up and shot at me right here. Feel this, Carl. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Right here. Right there. Right yes. There. Do you it's feel that? Very isolated. Yes. Yeah. Do you feel it? Holy smokes! Yeah. Right here now, Carl. It's moving. It's transient. Do you feel it's moving all towards you? I do right here. Yes. Right. It's palpable. It's moving to you. Yes. Exactly. Let's put this down for a second. If you put your hand right into it, you feel like a low-grade electric charge. Yeah. It pins and needles sensation. But it's moving now. Yes. Something that, like you said, it's transient. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh, oh, gosh. gosh. Yes, yes, right yes, here. right here. We felt it at the same time. Yes. I don't know. Could this be a child? Because of the level it starts at? As Carl and I feel this ice cold air mass, all of the hairs begin to raise on his arms. See here? So all those hairs are standing up. This is what we're feeling right now. 
Then something begins to affect his hand. It's kind of painful. It's like something, like an insect is stinging my thumb. Where do you feel it at, Carl? Right here, and the palm of my hand. Billy? Yeah? Can you bring up a tri-field here immediately? Yes, it's tolerable, but the fact that I'm in here right directly above us. Can we say something to see if if this is non-human? Is there anything that we could say from the Bible that we could determine whether or not it would react to that? If Further, we cite a psalm or just something, you know. I can say a mock tone of prayer in Latin. Oh, yes. Do you want to do that? Yes. Would this ignite a response if this was a non human demon? It has before. Because traditionally, okay. Latin. Whoa, 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 whoa. This thing is going crazy. Look at this. Look, it's pegged on 30. You, are you serious? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was when he was talking about that, as soon as he started talking about that. Just as we ask Keith, a demonologist, to say something from the Bible to agitate the entity, Billy receives extremely high EMF spikes. I think it's what was here before. I think it's reacting to us. It does not want us here. I think that's exactly what it is, what was here before, and what is still here. I sat down, dude. I was like, it was either run or sit, because I was going down. It was this weird energy. Not normal, not like we've felt before. The word of God according to his psalmist David. Touch not my anointed ones, do my prophets no harm. May the Lord's protection be over us all. Let us not be harmed, let us be kept safe. Amen. 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 What was that? What was that? That was a growl. That was a growl. As Keith is saying this protection prayer, we all feel. Amen. 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 What's that? What was that? What was that? It was a growl. That was a growl. That was a growl. Oh, yeah. How many people heard the growl? I think everybody yeah. in this room. Yeah. Everyone heard that. Did you hear that sound? Did you hear it? That wasn't a creak. That was no, a no, man. sound. It came right between the camera. And the... At this time, I make the call for all of us to sit at nerves and monitor the empty house. You have a message. Whoa, there is a full figure in the next bedroom. It's 10.30 in Harrisville, Rhode Island, and all of us will be listening to separate microphones placed throughout the house while Billy operates a handheld camera to film us. We also have nine motion-activated night vision trap cameras throughout the farmhouse, as well as X cameras. Whoa. Whoa. At six minutes into my microphone session covering the room where the Perrin family seance occurred in 1973, I hear wood faintly Whoa. creaking as if someone is sitting down in one of these chairs. Billy, Aaron, Carl, and myself now decide to see what happens when we turn off all of the lights and investigate only using night vision. You know what? This is the uh, where they did the seance. Right here. Right Whoa, did you just go? That was him. Okay, okay, yeah. okay sorry. I got to discount that. Where a seance was conducted with pretty interesting results. I decide to conduct a spirit box session throughout the entire house. You have a message. This is your opportunity. Don't be shy. We saw you. And after countless questions, we do not receive a single voice. As we continue trying to establish communication upstairs, Billy is downstairs by himself and watch what passes in front of him. You were able to hurt me. You hurt my kidney real bad. I thought I was in serious trouble. I thought there was what this black mass is.
we have Carl and Aaron, I sent them down into the cellar. And because we feel like these spirits are just being very elusive, we're going to use the SLS and see if we can pick up anything and see where they're hiding. Whoa, look. Seeking right in here. Look at that. Push the water here. As Carl is walking around with the direct link device, Aaron notices that the storm outside is starting to cause water to seep through the basement walls. I got kind of a creepy feeling down here, but I think that's understandable. Let's try to go through here carefully. I want to see the well. To go or some spot. I just felt an emotional response down here. Yeah? Feels like there's something here, but we're not getting any indication, anything direct. Right. But I don't feel alone. And that's just my subjective feeling right now. Everything I think is going to work has not within the last hour. As I scan the entire upstairs, I capture no figures, but as I hand the SLS camera over, to Billy and sit in this chair. We capture something incredible. Can you come through that door? Come out of that bedroom. Come in here where we can see you. Like I want that to happen. 
but it's not my own thoughts wanting this. I feel like damn, something reaching <clears throat> into my chest and pulling. I'd rather take it on to myself than have my friends here. Affected. Whoa, I just felt that. Strong over here, you guys. It's, it's very strong. Oh, oh my god, it's like a tidal wave of just static energy coming out of here. At this point, no one notices how badly Carl is being affected right now. What is that? Speak to us! I demand you to speak to us now! could be in a dangerous situation. Yeah, with me. things that I experienced was a black mist. I saw a black shadow. There was something dark 
rolling down. I have personally seen it with my own eyes. The scene, it was right here. Yeah, that's where Rocket. I saw it too. And now we are capturing it on camera. Episode, we have reopened the notorious case files of the Perrin family and the tragic circumstances they suffered in 1973. Last night, we concluded phase one of our investigation, and we are very concerned about what lies ahead. So, you know, we're not too far away from Providence, Rhode Island, and H.P. Lovecraft, you guys know, yeah, yeah H.P. Lovecraft wrote a lot of crazy horror stories. He wrote about Cthulhu. Cthulhu was this 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 monster where if you made eye contact with it, you would go insane. Wow. And H.P. Lovecraft, I visited his grave yesterday, and it got me thinking, this black entity, this black mass that's been seen by not only the Bet Porch with Carl Johnson. Did you see what I saw? I didn't. I didn't. Carl, what did you dark. see? I saw something dark just moving out there. And then he saw it in there as he started to lose himself. A legendary investigator that worked alongside Ed and Lorraine Warren back here, one of the most notorious cases in American history, had this very thing come through him and affect him while he was seeing what? This, this dark black figure. This just... dark black figure that we also captured on a Polaroid camera. Keith Johnson told me that he believes that this entity is ancient, and I agree with him, that this entity is bound to this, this land, all right? And this entity uses this house as its primary residence, if you will. And it does travel out and affect other nearby houses and properties and people. Look back at the times of the Arnold family. It all started out with Sally Arnold, who died in this house of a disease. Then her five-year-old daughter also died to this disease, and I believe another child of hers also died in the house from disease. Then, after that, you've got Susan Arnold, who hung herself. You've got John Arnold, who killed himself with rat poison. And then you've got Prudence Arnold, who was murdered and her throat was slit. And not only that, just a random guy walks out onto the property here named Jarvis Smith, and they find his body in one of these wooden sheds. He's just dead. What killed him? It's insane. Something on the property. It's like, a lot of maybe not living, so, but something. All these people, they died all in this area. But it all started out here. This entity knows that we're here. We have awakened something. But let's push it even more. For this segment of our investigation, our lockdown investigation, it's only going to be us four. There's going to be no nerve center, okay? But we're going to start out investigating this, the ground. <laughs> As we prepare to investigate the outside property of the Harrisville farmhouse, we decide to set up some X cameras inside the house and let them roll. During this time, something begins to happen to me. Ow, 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 ow. Get the camera, bro! Where you at? I can't see you. What happened? Something's getting me on my side! What the It's an attack! Something's getting me on my side! What side? Where's it hurting at? my side! Which side? Where my kidney is! As I'm setting up an upstairs and felt like a knife going into me, man. Mm -hmm. This is also the same exact spot where demonologist Carl Johnson felt the stabbing or stinging in his hand. It's like something, like an insect is stinging my thumb and the palm of my hand. What are you? Is this what you're gonna do? This is the room where those lights were flickering. Have you seen this happen before? I've never seen this happen before. We've had flashes of light, but not from the actual lights themselves. And this is the lights for the, 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 this is the room where the guy's lights were, the, where the This is the I can't 
talk. Guys, something is affecting me, really. Like it is, man. Holy I did not feel this at all with Coral when we were in here. My, I am just chilled up. I am energized. I don't have this pain anymore, but I think this is the room where that light was flickering off that the owner showed us. Something's happening. See, it's not, it's not focused on Carl anymore because Carl's not here. Now it's all focused on you. You don't have permission to go into my body like you did, Carl. You don't have permission! Do me a favor. Yeah. Just as a trial, give me this and walk across that threshold there. That's where it happened. I just had up there what I would call an attack 100%. I have a feeling this entity has something to do with the river down there. I want to go down there. What is that? That was not there a second ago. Holy shit, I just saw something moving out. This Rhode Island farmhouse now takes us deep into the surrounding woods. As we make our way down to the creek, where Corey found an unusual tombstone-like object submerged in the water, and where the Perrin family believes the bodies of seven dead soldiers are buried within an old stone wall. She said there are seven dead soldiers buried in the wall. I lead off with the parabolic microphone, which is a highly sensitive directional audio recording device. Why were you telling one of the daughters that there was seven soldiers buried in this wall? Is this the wall? Are there seven soldiers in the wall? Just as I'm asking about the wall, our thermal camera captures something interesting. If you watch very closely, you can see an unknown light blue object, meaning it contains no heat that begins to manifest here. This object then proceeds to flash by the stone wall as a dark mass. We debunk this as not being a flying bird, insect, or animal, because as you can see here, this little mouse is solid white, indicating heat. Just as we are continuing our path to the creek, my phone, which I made sure to turn off, turns itself on and begins receiving an incoming unknown call. And as I try to answer it, my phone then shows a message asking me if I'm dead. What the f***? Look at this. Is there something else I can Are you dead? What? What? Are you dead? My phone, I thought I turned it off and I felt it vibrate. So I pick it up and it says, are you dead? It said, are you dead? Did you get that on camera? I think so. I think so. Did you see that it said unknown caller? Yes. So and then I went to caller. turn it off and it said, are you dead on the screen? We continue on to the creek as I also begin using the thermal camera. And as we arrive at the bridge, I capture an unexplained voice on the parabolic microphone. He could not sneak up on anybody with that thing. 
As Billy says this, you can hear no other voices on the camera's audio, but on the parabolic microphone audio, you can hear another mysterious voice while Billy is talking. Make our way back towards the farmhouse. I start scanning the property with the infrared binoculars. I capture this ball of light that at first seems interesting, but I'm not 100% certain it's paranormal. I then see a very bright ball of light within the woods that seems to move while it also dims down. What is that? Oh, no. That was not there a second ago. That's bright. I can't even see it without night vision. I did not move my camera and it just moved. Whoa, it's just fading out. As this mysterious light disappears, I turn my binoculars towards the farmhouse and capture something shocking. The closer, hey. Whoa. What? Dude, is you? What? Holy I just saw something move in the house. Stop. No I swear to God, I saw something, a shadow, move by the house right no. in the window there. I swear to God. In this moment, as I'm panning the IR binoculars across the house, I see a black shadow blocking all of the light in the entire window. And when we go frame by frame right here, you can distinctly see what appears to be the half silhouette of a figure. Now watch what happens as the light in the window slowly comes back as this dark shadow figure seems to morph into a black mass. And as I realize what I just saw, I quickly pan back and there is no figure and no black mass. Just the window with full unobstructed light as it should be. Now watch as we play this footage in slow motion in reverse. And you can see the black mass and figure moving and blocking the light in the window even more easily. You can even make out the the neck, the shoulders, the body. When we review the X cameras that are rolling in the house at the time this was captured, we find nothing. I was panning a little what? bit, but I swear to God it looked like somebody walked Wait, away. if it was the night vision camera? I swear camera? to God. That's the library. Let's go. We immediately start running towards the house. We have not reviewed the footage, but I know what I saw, and it looked like a dark something passing by a window. I was panning at the time, but I went right back to it. I know what the f I saw. Remember that dream I had that I told uh, Eve that Carl? Yeah. That it was going to give me, I was going to pay the price? Right. It's kind of what it did to you in oh, your kidney. Man. The thing that is in here was telling me not to bring you to here. And if I do, I'm going to pay the price for it.
I feel like it's going to just drain all of our energy. Just Zach, so Zach, Zach, say something, please. I swear it's so true. The energy inside here is indescribable. It's making us confused, lost in thought. I feel like I can't comprehend anything going on. It's a total psychological situation where I don't feel in control. We are now head upstairs and I begin using the intercom device to see if we can make any type of communication. During last night's investigation, we did not receive a single voice through any of our audio devices. Talk to me. As I am still in a trance from what just happened downstairs, we capture some incredible audio evidence. Listen as the same male voice comes through and says, Forgive for me. We then receive a... Does this command tie into what was affecting Carl? As the intercom box begins to change with a weird interference sound we haven't heard before, Aaron all of a sudden begins to have a sharp pain in his chest. What's happening now? Oh, I feel like there's a sharp pain right up through my middle of my chest. But, uh, oh, just... Still hurting? This is now the third person to feel a stabbing sensation somewhere on their body. Like an insect is stinging my thumb and the palm of my hand. Something's getting me on my side. Where my kidney is. There's a sharp pain right up through my chest. Does that mean like it's affecting our image so it knows? I don't know. Why don't you do something bigger to scare us? Which way to go? Right to left. As I see this dark shadow, our time-lapse IR camera downstairs captures an unexplained darkness on two of its frames, which totals six seconds. As you see here, this is how our time-lapse camera is supposed to look, but what we can't explain is this darkness here and here, before the camera returns to its full, normal, ambient, lit shot of the room. Downstairs, and Aaron begins to question going any further. I don't know if this is worth it, dude. I'm gonna be honest. Like, what are we trying to prove here? Show my man. Well, it's not, but this is really risky, dude. I don't know what I, I know what I felt up there, and I know what I felt down here. Like, serious, dude. What are we gonna do? Find the spirit? He's gonna piss us off, come after us, destroy something? I don't know. Like, it's almost one of those things where it's like we shouldn't be here. We just shouldn't. This is bigger beyond us. It's just, this is one of those places you don't do that. Spirit of the fire, remember, there's some sort of disturbance in this room. Are you alright? While Aaron is having second thoughts about continuing our investigation of this iconic Harrisville farmhouse, the fact is we're capturing incredible evidence of what we have spent our entire lives trying to capture, and none of us are going to stop now for fear of an attachment during such an iconic investigation. The problem that I have with this is, is that a family lives in this house, Absolutely. so why would we want to do a conjure ritual in that house? Exactly. I want to do it for the experimentation to see what would happen, but I do worry about the family, there's a kid that's already scared to live here, like I don't think we should just do it without at least talking to the family first. Okay, but is this something that you could close after we're do you have the power to do that? Absolutely, I've done it before. Hey, Corey? Yes, sir. Hey, we had something that we wanted to ask you, okay? And you can say yes or you can say no. Okay. Jay wants to do a conjure ceremony. After he does this ceremony, he says that he can close it down so it would not be open when we left. But since you live here, I, we wanted to ask you if that is agreeable or no. Are you sure? Can I repeat that you said yes? I mean, you had a document then, so... Before. 
for it. Okay, we'll shut it down when we're done. I make the decision to have Jay and Aaron conduct the conjuring ritual in the cellar while Billy and I stay above and try to document any activity in the farmhouse. What the f what? What was that? What was that? Was it, that was in the library. <laughs> When we review the camera rolling in the library room, it sounds like some type of vase or dishes moving. What the f what? Jay, you guys didn't scrape the ceiling or move anything like with glass or anything down there, did you? No, not at all. Okay. So, what Billy and I are going to do is, is watch. Basement, the cellar, getting ready to do this conjure ceremony. Billy and I are going to split up and see if this entity comes to attack either one of us. I head upstairs by myself into Andrea Perrin's old bedroom while Billy remains solo in the dining room. Jay, for today. Go ahead. We're all set down here and I'm ready to start the ritual. We got this all set up there. I'm ready. I'm on the top floor in Andrea Perrin's bedroom. Billy, are you set? Yeah, I just got. Camera all set. I'm sitting at the dining room table with my back to the kitchen where the black mass went in front of my lens. All right, guys, here we go. Be careful. I don't have a good feeling about this. Spirit of the fire, remember. Gira, spirit of the flames, remember. As Jay conducts this conjuring ritual, we wait to see if it works and to see if we are going to receive any sign at all. I've got the geophone in front of me and for some reason the temperature is climbing 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 and it's also as jay is conducting the ritual in the cellar i capture this anomaly right before i receive a compelling message through the ovulus cellar blasting oh my god yes. just as jay i can hear him down there in the cellar it says cellar lasting blaze the second he started talking in the cellar it says cellar lasting blaze and i just got real hard to breathe is this evidence of an intelligent spirit or being that is aware of what is happening in the cellar i keep hearing footsteps in the kitchen behind me right now i can hear jay yelling in the basement we need you to draw out the other spirits here you're not walking around are you no i haven't left my bed there's someone pacing around in the library or in that seance room, I can hear it. All of a sudden, Jay and Aaron hear a super loud bang come from above them. At this same moment, Billy is absent frozen in fear at the table. I can't move. I'm afraid to get up. I, don't, I honestly don't want to go in there. All of us hear that loud bang come from the main floor, but we don't know exactly where on that floor it came from, which makes us very nervous. searches the house but finds nothing on the floor that may have fallen so he comes upstairs to check on me Zach it's me oh my God. dude I'm petrified I'm so scared are you alright are you okay Maserati it's 3 a.m. here in Harrisville, and a dark energy is deeply affecting us all. Are you okay? Hey, are you alright? Yeah. You look like you're in a daze to me. What more am I supposed to do? What was that? Oh my god. Zach? Oh my god. Oh my god. 
feel good, Billy. I don't feel good. Something's grabbing my left leg. I don't want to be in this room. Something's grabbing my left leg. Give me. I gotta get out of this room. Something took two steps at me and lunged at me out of that closet just now, right in front of me. <laughs> oh my God! It's the hangers. Zach, get the out of here, dude. I'm serious. Our cameras capture something that is beyond incredible. In the midst of this disturbing situation for us both, he clearly documents on camera the hangers in the closet moving erratically without explanation. Just a few seconds before, you can see them absolutely still. This is the boiling point. Billy and I are now in full panic and shock as to what we just witnessed. Are you with me? Are you here? I don't know. Okay. Get back to Zach. I need you, man. I have to go back and investigate these hangers more, so I try to make contact using a digital recorder, but I capture no EVPs. Billy wants he and I to go back to Nerve Center and process this moment, gather ourselves, and immediately start reviewing this evidence. Yeah, right here. Where the f are you guys been? Right here. here. The dude was just walking upstairs. We've been down here. Did you hear me come up? I came upstairs and I was calling for you guys. Zach, Billy, you guys all right? We've been in here like reviewing photos. You good? Yeah. What's wrong? I came up to check on you guys. As soon as I came up, I called for you. It's silent. Uh huh. But like, it felt like I was walking to another world. Billy, Zach, is that you guys upstairs? I hear. Steps. And I was like, oh, they're upstairs. Like, clear as day, walking around upstairs. I went upstairs. Just now? Just now. What the hell happened up here? Anybody up here? Hello? When I swept the hall upstairs, and nothing. Who of you guys are in here? No. Where's Aaron? He won't leave the circle. I haven't closed it yet, but he's still sitting in the circle. I don't know if what I did opened up something, some kind of portal or a time drift or something, but probably walking through there right now and swearing you guys are walking around and me looking for you and not finding you, I just really blew my mind. Like, I'm not being affected by something controlling me that messes with your head. That makes you lose all sense of reality and I immediately demand that Jay goes back downstairs to close the ritual circle at once. Bara, bara, maseratu, bara. Jay then buries all of the ashes from the ritual in the ground outside. By reopening one of the most notorious paranormal cases in history, we have discovered the horrors that plagued the Perrin family nearly 50 years ago.